Today we're going to learn about arrays inside JavaScript. And arrays is something that we use quite often inside JavaScript. And it's a way for us to save a lot of data inside one variable inside our JavaScript code. So an example here would be, let's say we have 100 names and we need to print them out inside the website. Now, instead of creating 100 variables, you know, assigning a name to each one of them, you can create something called an array. Now, the good thing about an array is that it takes up a lot less code and is a lot less complicated to create, you know, just assigning a bunch of values to one variable. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you guys how to create these arrays, how to print them out inside the browser and create something called an array object. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is, as you guys can see, I have a paragraph tag called test and I'm going to go ahead and create an array and insert data inside this paragraph here. So when we go down inside our script tags, I'm going to go ahead and create just to show you guys a bunch of variables. So I'm going to say variable name one is equal to, for example, Daniel. Then I'm just going to go ahead and copy this two more times. Like so I'm going to change the variable names because we don't want to keep the same names. I'm going to change the name to John and Jane. So right now we have three pieces of data. And if I were to insert this inside the browser, I could do that. But let's say I want to make this a lot simpler by just creating three names and inserting them into one variable. What I can do here is I can create something called an array. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and say we have a variable. I'm going to call this one names. And then I'm going to go ahead and rewrite what we have up here, but inside one variable. So I'm going to say names is equal to brackets. And then inside the brackets, we can go ahead and insert the same data. So I'm going to say double quotes, Daniel. Then after the double quotes, I'm going to go ahead and say comma, then a new piece of data called John, comma, and then Jane. Now these two pieces of code here does the exact same thing, except for the top one here being a lot bigger and a lot more complicated, where the array down here is much more simple. Now there's another way to create an array instead of having to just, you know, use brackets, which is using the function array inside JavaScript. So I'm just going to go ahead and say we have a variable called names. I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite what we have up here. I'm going to set it equal to array with a big A parentheses semicolon. And then inside parentheses, we do the exact same thing as we did up here. Just going to copy what we have up there and insert it. So these two pieces of code does the exact same thing as what we have up here. Now, of course, like I said, this one down here is not really the one that people prefer to use because it takes up more code and it's just much simpler to use the one up here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and delete what we have here. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how we can print this out inside the browser. So if I were to go down and say we have a document dot get element by ID parentheses punctuation inner HTML is equal to names and then we want to say brackets and then say zero. Now, of course, we want to get the test ID up here. So I'm just going to say test inside get element by ID. Now, what I just did here is right now inside this array we have here, I'm just going to go and delete these three up here because we don't need them. We have three pieces of data. Right now we have Daniel, John, and Jane. Now each time we count inside code, whether it being PHP code or JavaScript code, we always start at zero. So Daniel is going to be data number zero, John is going to be number one, and Jane is going to be number two. So right now when I go in and say we have a variable called names, brackets, zero, I'm referring to the first data inside this variable here. So if I go ahead and save this and go inside my browser, refresh, you guys can see we get Daniel. If it were to change the number into a one, we should get John. So this is how we can write variables and how to get the names or at least the data inside the array so we can spit them out inside the browser. Now, one thing I want to mention before we start creating array objects is that when we do it this way, where we have arrays or at least data inside an array and we want to spit out the data, we can spit out the data much faster if we were to use arrays than you know creating a bunch of variables because we have something called loops inside JavaScript that makes it a lot easier to spit out the data. Now we're going to talk about loops a little bit later. For now, we're just going to go ahead and stick with this. So the next thing we're going to learn is how to create an array object inside JavaScript. And what we have here, you know, the array we just created is technically if we were to test it inside the browser using a JavaScript function that actually tells you what kind of data this is, it will tell you that what we have here is an object. Now, what we want to do is we want to refer to this as an array since 
technically it's not an object, at least, you know, not the way we, we like to think about it. So we're gonna learn how to create an array object, which is a lot more powerful if you want to do more complicated JavaScript projects, and it's not really a difficult thing to, to create. So don't think that we're about to learn something really complicated here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here, so I'm gonna go ahead and go below uh, what we have here. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and comment out what we have up here, like so, and like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and create an array object. Now, the way we do that is by creating a variable. I'm just gonna call this one names, just like the previous one. I'm gonna set it equal to curly brackets, not brackets, but this time curly brackets, colon. And inside the curly brackets, the first data, we can go ahead and give it a name. So right now, if I were to say, well, actually, let's not call this one names, let's actually call it person, because that makes more sense here. Uh, and basically what we can do with an array object is we can go ahead and say, well, we have a person, and this person has specific properties and methods such as names or an age, or maybe some kind of function that calculate something about this person inside these curly brackets here. So what we can do is we can go and say, let's say we have a first name, like so. Let's actually make that big, like so. Colon, double quotes, Daniel, comma, and then the next property, which could be last name, colon, double quotes, Nielsen, let's say I have an H as well, because this is technically my name and my last name. So let's say I have an H colon, which is 25. And this is how we create an object. Now what's important to understand here is that right now this is an object because we assigned names to the data inside the curly brackets. And this is actually what we technically inside other programming languages call an associative array, meaning that right now we have just a very basic array that has names for the data. Now inside JavaScript, we don't have anything called associative arrays. This is called an object, okay? So if you want to print out the data from, from this object here, we can actually go ahead, go down to the next line and say that we have another document get element by ID, paste it down here. And then instead of names, we're gonna go ahead and say we have person. And then instead of the brackets, we create a punctuation and say we have first name because that's what we have inside as a name. If I were to save this, go inside the browser, you guys can see we get Daniel. As well, we could change this to age if we wanted to, and we would get 25. So this is how we create array objects inside JavaScript. Now, a couple more things about arrays is that typically when you see an array inside, you know, a tutorial website or something like that, um, you typically don't see it like this, you know, in one line. Now, typically when you see an array, you see that people have moved down the data like so, like so, like so, and like so, because it makes a lot more sense to read it this way. Now it's really important for you guys to know that you don't insert commas at the last data, you know, because it needs to look like in one line. So typically when you see people write arrays online, it looks like this. Same thing goes for objects down here where it would actually look like this, like this, like this, and like this. Now, the last thing you guys need to know about JavaScript objects, like the one we have here, is that we can insert other types of data than just properties like the one we have here. We can actually insert functions inside these objects here, which then get renamed as methods because they're inside an object. We can also insert arrays inside an array, meaning that if I were to say, well, we have an A tier, but let's say I want to create an array out of this, we can actually go ahead and instead of 25, we could create a list of numbers inside the A tier. Now in the next episode, we'll talk about how to insert arrays and how to insert functions inside these objects here. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.